Welcome back, fam. I'm back with my girl, Khadija, and it's the Teresa and Khadija show. <laughs> And I'm so excited to be here with Khadija. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here with you too. Thank you. It's been a while since we've been together. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit of break with Corona. Corona. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh. We had a shelter in place and thank mm -hmm. God, like governor is lifting that up because I missed my girl. Oh, She's part of our fam. Okay. <laughs> so we are gonna dive into what we're excited to call, what? Flawless Foundation. And Khadija is gonna tell us a little bit about what Flawless Foundation is to us. So, to me, Flawless Foundation is definitely um, when you have like that really good base. Foundation is so important because it's pretty much the first thing that you put on in your makeup, mm -hmm. but it ties everything together at the end. So before we get into our Flawless Foundation look, we wanna tell you about how we prepped our skin. And just like you would prep your art canvas by wetting it, you need to prep your skin with good exfoliation, good moisturization, mm -hmm. right? So that your makeup goes on better. At Clinique, we say makeup only looks as good as the skin beneath. And as your favorite Clinique consultants, Khadija and Teresa, mm -hmm. we wanna share with you how to get great skin, but a flawless foundation look. Before we begin, if you wanna join Teresa's fam, you can like, comment, and subscribe to her YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook at Teresa Von Regan. We would love for you to be part of the fam. And Khadija and I are going to be starting this new series, the Teresa and Khadija Show. <laughs> I'm excited. So we're really excited. And we've done one video together. This is our second. And we just really like doing makeup together and just having fun. So please come back to the channel and join the fam. All right. Let's, let's get, get started. woo <laughs> First thing is we want to show you what skincare we're using. So what are you using, Khadija? So my first step is usually always my face wash, which I really like the Rinse Off Foaming Cleanser. Um, I like it a lot because it really kind of gets all the excess oil out of my skin without making me feel like really super, super, super dry. And my cleanser that I love is the Liquid Facial Soap Extra Mild. I love this because I'm a drier skin. I'm a dry combination, but I like the feeling of this milky, creamy soap. And the other two products that I use with that, and Khadija's gonna show you hers are, I use Clarifying Lotion, which is amazing. It gets off dead skin, dirt, and oil, but it's the biggest difference maker in skin. And I just started using this ID with the Sallow Skin cartridge. So this is my three-step skincare routine. And we're gonna use it. Mine's is the Clarifying Lotion number three, which is for more oily skin. And then the Moisture Surge 72 Hour Auto Replenishing Hydrator. Um, I like more gel just because I have like really oily skin and I spend a lot of time outside. So the gel, it has aloe, so it protects my skin from any damage from the sun, but also kind of makes it really smooth and moisturized. Nice. And when you use these three products together, hold yours up too. The Cleanse Exfoliate, which is your clarifying lotion and moisturizer, the three products together improve comfort, texture, and appearance of your skin. So those are like must-haves for to get that perfect canvas and that perfect base. So what are we gonna do next? So next we're going to prime our skin before we do our foundation. Um, I think actually we're both going to use the Super Primer Universal Face Primer from Clinique. Yes. Um, I like this primer a lot because it goes right into the skin. And I'm always going back to the fact that I have oily skin. It's very crucial that the primer does not have anything that will disturb my makeup with the oil. So this I like because it kind of like naturally dries out into the skin but makes my skin look very soft. And I'm drier, but I do love this product still because it's oil free. Um, and I don't like to put oil in my T-zone because I still have those oily areas, but I use a lot of primer in my T-zone. And I tend to touch my face a lot and my makeup wears off if I do that. But the makeup I'm going to show you today, it doesn't wear off and the primer helps it yep. to stay on all day. So I like to use my fingertips too. So I use my fingertips. Is that how you like to put it on? Yeah, I like to use, kind of just use my fingertips. I put a lot in my T-zone 
because it makes it look so soft and I have the most texture usually on my pidong. Yeah, and I do too. So I, from my oily days, I'm not oily anymore, but I have the most texture there, like pores. Um, so that's really where I focus it. And I use a good bit and I do my nose, my forehead, around my lip, my chin. I really don't do too much on the outer cheeks, do you? A little bit, but not usually, just because that's using like the softer part of my face. Right. Khadija and I are so excited to dive into our foundations. We use two different foundations, but two different amazing foundations that Clinique has. And as your favorite Clinique consultants, we want you to find your perfect Clinique foundation. And Clinique.com will help you with that, but also we will help you with that. So I use Beyond Perfecting Foundation. I love this because it's a two-in-one foundation and concealer. And if you notice, I have a lot of discoloration on both sides of my face and I can get an amazing flawless finish with this foundation. Like, you won't even see any of my discoloration. So this is my favorite. My favorite foundation is the Even Better Foundation. Um, it helps even and correct my skin tone as I wear it and it does have sunscreen as well. Um, I like this a whole lot because it's very buildable. So even though it is medium coverage, I can still kind of get like that kind of natural full look when I wear it this way. So let's do the fun part and get this foundation on our yeah. face, right? <laughs> it's like painting, right? When I think yeah. about this, I think about my daughter Amanda and it's like, I get to paint my face every day. Amanda loves painting. <laughs> she paints beautiful canvases. So for application, I'm going to use a sponge and it is damp. Um, I think that it kind of like, for me, blends a little bit better when it's damp on my skin. So I love, as you see, this doe foot applicator on the Beyond Perfecting, but I also use a blender, and I also like to use a foundation brush, because the foundation brush allows me to pat and stipple. So this is what a patting and stippling motion is, and that's kind of what I do. I see your patting and stippling too. Mm -hmm. I kind of yeah. I go back and I pat and stipple as well with my blender. I feel like it looks um, a lot more natural when I stipple it into the skin because then it's like by pushing it into my skin, it's really giving the foundation in my skin a chance to kind of come one together. I agree, Khadija. It doesn't look like foundation just sitting on the mm -hmm. surface. Then it looks it's like just... it's just melting into my skin. Yeah. So you can see as I pat and stipple, this discoloration just starts to disappear. Now when you have some darker spots like I do, you're gonna have to layer the foundation to make sure that you're covering all of that discoloration so you can have that flawless finish. And I really like to take my time with applying my foundation just because like I said that's the thing that's going to tie everything together in the end so you really got to take your time when you're putting on your foundation make sure that base is right I completely agree so Teresa do you have any tricks for color matching I like to match my neck um, because of my discoloration. So if I go with my face color, a lot of people get thrown off because of the discoloration. They're looking at the grayer, tanner spots of the face and it's not really tan, it's like sunspots. So if I go with that color, it looks weird. I look like I have like this darker neck, uh, face than my neck. So I go with my neck and degligee color and I have redness around my eye area, and then like I have discoloration not only here, but here. So it's hard to find on a lot of skins like that nice area to match. Mm -hmm. So I would say, unless you're like a really youthful skin who has that perfect flawless <laughs> skin, the chest is a great tip to yeah. match. Concealer is next, and concealer makes all the difference, don't you think? Yes, it does. I'm gonna use my MAC 24 Hour Studio Fix Concealer. I definitely like this concealer because it sets itself and it's very smooth. Nice, mm -hmm. can't wait to see it. I started using this Too Faced Born This Way Concealer, 
and I am obsessed with this. It is amazing. And I've actually never used that. Either of it, you should try it. I don't put my foundation under my eyes. I put that up to like the bone here uh, because my eye area is getting so thin as I age. I know I keep saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I need something that gives good coverage because of my darkness, as you can see, but doesn't fit in any lines and oh, looks okay. nice. So this says that it's super coverage, but it does not sit in any of my lines and it's amazing. I do a V shape on my eye because that helps to lift my eye and helps my face to look more sculpted. So I go like this. Oh, you do that too. Yeah, I do a V shape as well, but I do kind of like to drag it out a little bit just because my face is a little bit more round. Mm -hmm. It kind of helps uh, elongate my face to the sides a little bit. The same thing. I go up and elongate it, like you said, my V, but mine's kind of for a different reason <laughs> again. <laughs> Because I need a lift. I need to lift everything. It kind of really helps give my face a little bit more definition to bring it out a little bit further. You have such a pretty face. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I like to do concealer on my top lip to highlight that mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see a mustache. <laughs> and I like to do it on my chin and middle of my forehead. Those are just like usually all the places where I want to be emphasized when the light hits it. So I really focus my concealer on my eye and then I go back in those areas that you were talking about and I go back with a highlighter a lot. Um, I will go back with a little bit of concealer though on my nose. Um, I do it after I do my eyes. So I'll go right down the bridge of my nose. I'll go right above the brow too because I don't want the concealer to sit too long while I'm blending the other areas. Right. Because um, for me, I just worry about it. My skin's not as oily as yours. <laughs> That's why I like for the sponge to be damp because mm -hmm. I think that it helps keep that product kind of more wet to be more blendable. Nice, good tip. Now this is the color of the Too Faced concealer I'm using is called Snow. I think it's Snow. No, yes, and I chose this color because it's like one to two shades lighter than my foundation, and that helps to brighten too. Yeah, your concealer's a little bit lighter than yeah, your foundation. Yeah, I like it a little bit lighter, but what I do is when I blend it with the sponge, I use that same exact side that I did my foundation with. So it kind of helps kind of bring those two oh, colors nice. together, and then now like how you see everything is kind of like softened and blended out. I like to go um, a little bit more directly up under the eyes once I blend everything out, just so it can bring back that really light color underneath my eyes. See, I like to do my jaw highlight only with powder. Oh, only just with powder. so it kind of like, for me being more brown, it kind of transitions a little bit better into my neck. Nice. And then I do, I think you did the, did you do the Cupid's bow with yes, your? Yes. I, I hit like the little raised parts of the Cupid's bow with the highlight. And then I put a little bit of contour in the center, the darker color in a minute. I'll put a little of the dark right in the center. So you want to put the dark where you want it to recede more. And then I like that little part where the Cupid's bow kind of sticks up. I put more highlight to accentuate the lip. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. And if you want to have a more, like, pouty looking lip. <laughs> <laughs> you can put a little of the dark underneath. That'll help me have a nicer, fuller lip like yeah. you, <laughs> or look in a minute when I put the and lipstick and, on. And even before you put your lipstick on, like when you look, when I look straight at mm -hmm. you, I can see that it makes your lips look a little bit poutier. Yeah. yeah. So Khadija has a nice, beautiful pouty lip. I have to work <laughs> a little bit harder. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna step into baking. Um, baking is pretty much when you're setting your under eye for long wear. 
I'm gonna start with my Sasha Buttercup powder. Um, I like this powder a lot, more so for the color, with me being more brown skin. Color definitely does matter in photos. I love the Clinique Loose Powder, and I use this either in neutral or invisible blends. I'm gonna use it in neutral today. I tap a bunch into my lid, so I have a good amount of product to bake with. And then I like to use a cotton ball first. For some reason, besides my blender, um, instead of my blender, it just gets a good amount um, of product under my eyes and in the areas I wanna bake. I bake wherever I put my highlight because it helps to set it and helps to add to the highlight. I touch my face a lot, so I feel like the baking helps to keep my makeup in place all day long. And being a mom of five and a busy full-time working mom, it's so important for my makeup to last all day long. For me, it's more so, again, my woolly skin. Mm -hmm. Within an hour, I could go from fresh face to I've had this makeup on for 10 hours. So <laughs> baking is very important to keep like my makeup looking fresh all day. Now I just use the powder that I bake with, but you'll see Khadijah uses another powder. So while I let the baking set for me, I start to do some of my contouring. And I use the Clinique Kirby Contour Stick to do some of my contouring while I let my baking sit. So if you think about how your lip extends, if you were to do like a fish face, you want the contour to follow that lip and then go to the cheek. And I'm also putting my baking powder everywhere that I put my concealer. Now I contour my jaw area underneath so I have like a more lifted jaw and a more defined jaw. I like to contour the sides of my nose to make it look more pouty. The bottom of my nose, really the bottom of my nose contouring is what it makes it look more pouty. I do across the bridge here too to give like a more cute pouty nose. And as my powder is baking into the skin, I blend some of this. While I'm baking, I like to do a little slight bit of highlighting to my nose. I have a smaller nose, so I don't really do like a whole lot, but I'll just take a couple dots of that concealer down the bridge of my nose and take my same sponge and just lightly kind of buff it out. Very light. So to end my baking, I'm gonna go in with my Beyond Perfecting Clinique Powder. Um, it's a two-in-one, so it has foundation and concealer in a form of a powder. And I'm just gonna kind of just blend that in to kind of just get rid of all the baking. That's awesome. Thank you. So, <laughs> your, your nose looks good. Thank you. <laughs> nice and slim. <laughs> so to end my baking, I'm finishing buffing all my contour. And I like to just use my fingertips and I work in an upward motion on my neck area when I'm blending that in. And then I use a bronzer brush, which is like a nice big brush like this. And I'm just gonna pat all my baking into the skin. And I'm gonna just kind of go over to my nose with some of it, brush it over to the nose to blend some of that nose contouring that I did. And then I'm gonna go back with my blender and kind of just press into the skin again. And I don't wanna to wipe too much of it off. I'm just gonna press. When I get to wiping my bacon off around my eye area, I definitely have to be careful because I don't want it to disturb my uh, powder and everything that I put underneath it. So I just kind of lightly swipe and dab around my eyes. My highlight right along my cheekbone and my nose, it's the Clinique Chubby Stick Highlighter. 
just to give an extra highlight there. And I warm it in with my fingertip and I just pat it because I don't want to wipe any of that foundation and concealer off. So I'm just pressing and rolling it into the skin. And then this is where I start doing my contour. Teresa did her contour in doing her highlighting. Um, because I like to do like a powder, I'm gonna do that after I set it. Um, I'm gonna use my NYX Professional Makeup Contour Palette, and it has like just like a bunch of different like highlighters and contours in it. I'm gonna pick the darkest color. Nice. And kinda go right underneath my cheekbone. Okay, so to finish up my look, I did my lips with the Intense Cola Lip Liner, the Canoodle Lipstick, and the Caramel Lip Splash. Hot. Ooh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> and to finish my brow, I used this One Shot product in Just Browsing in Black Brown. It's a one and done brows. I like it. You can do a quick brow. That finishes our flawless foundation look. Thank you. I like your lipstick too. I, I really it. like that you did the highlighter in the middle of your lips. I like that a lot. Yeah, you should try that. Have you tried that yet? I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to. Okay. But I think we look hot. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Please check out in the description the 25% off from your two favorite clinic consultants, Khadija and Teresa. Don't forget to like, Hit the subscribe and the bell so you can see our next Teresa and Khadija video. Yes, ma'am. And we can't wait to see you next time. Bye for now, fam. Bye. <laughs>